But back to the serious maths. Are there contradictions in mathematics? Many of us have the romantic idea that the whole point of mathematical proof is to establish facts beyond all possible doubt. For us romantics, a single contradiction in mathematics would put the whole edifice in doubt. We want certainty. The great German mathematician David Hilbert said in his famous address to the International Congress of Mathematicians in Paris in 1900, in mathematics there is no ignorabimus, there is no we shall not know. And 30 years later, he still maintained, we must know, we shall know. We might not yet have found a proof for the Riemann hypothesis or for the Goldbach conjecture that every even number is the sum of at most two primes. But if these things are true, a proof exists, and hopefully some ingenious future mathematician will find that proof. But two results published in 1931 by Kurt Gödel presented a blow to this view of mathematics. Suppose we have a system of logical rules which tells us how we can make deductions, and that this system allows us to count, without which our mathematics would be very limited indeed. Can we use this system to show that there cannot be a contradiction amongst the results we can prove using the system? Well, Gödel showed that the answer can be yes, which might seem like good news, except that the answer is yes, if and only if the system does in fact contain a contradiction. In other words, if our system is consistent, that is, it doesn't contain contradictions, then we cannot prove it is, is consistent. But if our system is not consistent, then we can prove that it is consistent. So suppose you're in a market for a good basis for the foundations of mathematics. You want a system which is free of contradictions. What you're offered is a system which can prove it has no contradictions, if and only if, it actually does have contradictions. Does that sound like a good deal? That was Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. His first incompleteness theorem tells us that in a consistent mathematical statement, sorry, in a consistent mathematical system like this, there are results which are true, which we cannot prove to be true. So for example, the Goldbach conjecture might be true, but there might be no way to prove it. In fact, it can't be false but unprovable, because if it is false, then there's some even integer which is not the sum of two primes, and in that case, it would be possible to find that integer and prove the theorem to be false. So if the theorem is false, it's proved to be false. So if it's unprovable, it must be true. So we certainly won't be able to prove that it's unprovable. Anyway, how did Gödel prove these devastating theorems? Essentially, he created a version of the liar paradox, this statement is false. Using a clever coding system to represent mathematics by integers, he effectively creates a proposition that says, this statement is not provable within our system. If that sentence could be proved, we'd have a contradiction. So the statement cannot be proved, therefore it is true. What was the outcome of Gödel's discovery? One might have thought that mathematicians many of whom over the centuries have, thought, have claimed that their subject has a unique relationship with truth, might be rather worried that they can prove their systems have no contradictions only if the reverse is in fact true. Or that the search for proof of long-standing conjectures might seem less attractive if there's a possibility that no such proof exists. Admittedly, if a statement is unprovable within a logical system, one can always create a new system in which it is provable, but is that good mathematics? But in fact, although apparently the great mathematician John von Neumann came out of a seminar in which Gödel had presented his results, saying, it's all over, Gödel's theorems don't seem to have a major effect on the practice of pure mathematics. Indeed, arguably, they're very helpful for pure mathematicians. When someone challenges you, how can you spend time proving things when you aren't even sure that your logical system doesn't contain contradictions? You can now answer, well, it's impossible to prove that, so why waste time worrying about it? But lots of people have misused Gödel's theorems to make claims about life in general by applying it to systems which don't meet the tight conditions of the theorems. For example, 
they've been abused to attack religion many times. One finds on the internet claims such as Gödel's incompleteness theorem demonstrates it is impossible for the Bible to be both true and complete. This is nonsense for a number of reasons. Um, it's not clear we expect the Bible to be complete, but um, there's no reason at all to suppose that the Bible forms a logical system of the type to which the theorem applies. Gödel himself created a logical proof of the existence of God, though he possibly did that more as an exercise in logic than for theological purposes. A perhaps more plausible argument, though in my opinion it's equally mistaken, is that our human ability to go outside a formal system, to see that the result that is unprovable within a system is in fact true within that system, is evidence that our consciousness is different from that of a computer, which supposedly cannot escape from its logical specification. And some people find that argument more convincing than I do.